Let's talk about pocket holsters, operational wallets, and the law. So to begin with, what are we looking at here? We're looking at six different ways to hold a firearm in your pocket. And uh, let's start with a quick quiz. Of the six different items we have here, which one of them is, requires a federal tax stamp in order to wear a firearm in your pocket? Maybe easy to tell because one of them doesn't have a firearm in it, and that's this one. The North American Arms Operational Wallet. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means in a moment. First, let's talk about pocket holsters. Basically, what we're talking about is an item that's designed to hold a firearm. In this case, an empty revolver in your pocket. And it's usually going to hold it uh, oriented in your pocket so that it's easy to draw. It's going to cover the uh, firearm so that it doesn't get all kinds of dust and lint in it. When it matters, like on a single act or a double action or... Uh, double action only. It's probably going to cover the trigger. However, on this one's a single action. It's not such a big deal. But most importantly, it usually breaks up the outline of the firearm in your pocket. So if you're wearing tighter pants or if you're wearing a firearm for over length of time, you don't get that kind of outline worn into the fabric of your pants. So we've got a couple of different options here. We recently did a uh, video about this one, which is designed for the small 380 pistols. Uh, it's got a hole for you to grab onto the pistol. It's got a place for you to stick your finger through under the trigger. And you can still rack the slide on top. Even though it still kind of looks like a wallet, it's uh, considered a holster. You've got this one, which is sort of a modified one that I use on this uh, empty pug. And again, it holds it oriented in my pocket, breaks up the outline, keeps dust and lint and junk out of there. And I didn't mention before, but it's also pretty easy to reholster on most of these. This one's another DeSantis. These two are both made by DeSantis. This one I've had forever. I really like it. Again, for a P380. And uh, works with most of the little 380s. Breaks up the outline. Stays in your pocket. Easy to reholster. Covers the trigger. Everything I want in a pocket holster. Last up, I've got this little guy, which is sort of a, I don't know, gun show find. Wasn't made real well. It kind of grips the pistol too much. But I always thought I might be able to use this to like mount it underneath a desk or something. But anyway, again, it does the sort of the same concepts. It breaks up the outline. Uh, it's easy to draw from. Well, it should be easy to draw from once it's repaired. And then, uh, again, keeps it oriented in your pocket so you can draw it. Now, the difference with the, this one, it's an operational wallet. Let's look at the thing itself instead of the box. This is an operational wallet. And a little disclaimer, it's never been a revolver in it. There will never be a revolver in it. And it has never had a revolver in it. Why do I put that disclaimer out there? Because this one requires a federal tax stamp. Let's talk about that a little bit. This is what we call an ATF letter. This one was a question that was asked of the ATF in December of 2006 and then answered in 2007. And the person that wrote the letter asked, number one, is this holster by itself considered a weapon or a firearm? And number two, since it, we know that it's uh, considered an AOW or any other weapon, if we were to put a standard revolver into this holster, would it also be considered an AOW if we put in a black powder revolver, which aren't technically firearms according to the federal uh, laws? And the answer was, the answer reply came back that you may know what an antique firearm is, you may understand what an AOW is, uh, according to our interpretation of subsection 5845, the ATF considers any firearm in this wallet to be uh, no longer looking like a regular firearm, which is basically the definition of an any other weapon. Uh, so basically by putting a revolver, no matter if it's a standard or black powder, into this wallet, uh, you've now created something that no longer looks like a firearm, and it's basically the same as a pen gun or a cane gun or some kind of crazy gun you'd have on your wrist or a ring gun or all those different things that are classified as AOWs which means you'd have to have a $200 tax to create this item and then a $5 tax to transfer it to someone else. So a lot of hassle just to carry it in this style of pocket holster, which is actually operational wallet. Uh, you may have heard of an operational briefcase, which is the you know James Bond type of thing where there's a trigger in the handle of the briefcase and you can shoot a full auto H&K MP5 uh, you know, through the briefcase while you're walking down the street. Uh, in the movies and stuff you see that kind of thing, uh, they consider this an operational holster. So because you could pull the, the thing out of your pocket and use it uh, while it's still in its 
you know, configuration that doesn't look like a firearm, uh, now it has a cool name like Operational Wallet. And you can see in the picture there where the little trigger just barely sticks out. The cylinder can rotate through this gap, and then you can't see it in the picture, but that's the hole where the bullet would come out. Now this is a collector's item isn't such a big deal because the reason I keep this letter, it goes on to describe that by itself, uh, this would not be a firearm. And that's why I keep the letter with the, the wallet in case anybody's a little too gung-ho and wants to consider me a felon for owning this. Again, there's never been a revolver in it. There never will be a revolver in it. And thanks to the ATF's clarification, I'm a-okay to own it as a collector's item. You even get a little, when they still made these, they don't make these anymore, when they still made them, you even got a little warning from NAA that says, hey, thanks for buying our holster. By the way, it may be a federal crime to put a firearm in it, so don't do that if it's a federal crime where you live, which is the whole United States. So, kind of a cool collector's item. Again, they don't make these anymore, but thought it might be an interesting little video to talk about the difference between a operational wallet and a pocket holster. <laughs> Not a heck of a lot of difference here. Can you tell the difference? The difference is the slide's exposed, so it still looks like a firearm. Gotta love the letter of the law. So, little discussion there. I know people love to uh, hate on little fine lines in the law there. And this is definitely one of those ones that just rubs you the wrong way sometimes. Federally licensed NFA firearm. $40 pocket holster. There you go. Anyway, at least we got concealed carry in all but one state. It'll keep getting better. Thanks for watching. The guys and gals of gunwebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching gunwebsites.com.